guys, my name is Achena. Welcome back to episode 43 of Game Programming. So we are back finally after that break that I took for Christmas, New Year's, whatever. And first of all, I want to wish you guys a happy new year. I hope you guys um, have some big plans for 2013. I know I do. And uh, hopefully, you know, it's going to be the best year of my life, basically. And, you know, I wish the same onto you all as well. Um, now, this show is going to resume being daily now. So, um... So yeah, that's something to look forward to, I guess. Now, today is actually an interesting day. Um, it's 41 degrees right now in Melbourne. Let's just say that, okay? And if you guys are from America, whatever, you'll find that it's actually 106 degrees Fahrenheit. So, I mean, it's, it's kind of hot right now. So if, if I, you know, I didn't sleep that well either. So if I get something wrong, if I take a little longer explaining something, just, you know, go easy on me. And, um, and yeah. But either way, guys, we've got some exciting stuff coming up in this series. I was actually thinking about all the stuff that we actually need to do um, going on in this year. And I'm hopefully, you know, going to be wrapping up the series this year as well. Um, so, yeah, first of all, though, um, if we launch our game, that's always what I like doing first. So we can see where we're up to currently. You can see that we've got this, uh, this nice thing. And we actually talked about making a player sprite. And we did make a player, uh, sorry, not a player sprite, a player um, class. And um, we ended up making a player class. and you can see that all this stuff, if we're actually like, um, this update method, I'm fairly sure is actually being used. If I go into references workspace, uh, oh, it's not being used, huh? Oh, well, it's probably being overridden and then used. I think it should be used. If we go into game. All right. All right, cool. So, um, you can see that right now, what we've got going on here is, um, these controls. They're actually being done in the update method. Now that's incorrect because what it's doing is something that it shouldn't be doing. We've got two integers over here, and what the cam what what is what actually is going on here is it's adjusting these integers right based on um, what we hit. I guess a better way to explain this would actually be if I go down in, into this render method right here. I'm just going to pull up um, right under right after the image is drawn. G dot draw string. And in the string, all I'm going to draw is like the X um, and then, you know, plus X and then plus uh, also the Y. So in other words, I'm just going to draw, I'm just going to draw those two integers on the screen. Um, I'll also set the color to white and I'll, you guys don't really need to take this down. I'm just trying to prove a point. And I'll set the font to like, I don't know, Vidana and we'll give it like, oops like a 50 size or something. Um, whoops, what am I doing? All right, 50 size. And this obviously will pop um, probably around the size of our screen. Okay, about 900. Um, probably pop it at around 450 by 400 or something. All right, import font. So if I, okay, that's not really the middle, but anyway, uh, you can see that as I move the, as I move the, the keyboard, I'm not really moving the keyboard, as I, as I hit the different keys to move our player, or, you know, what seems like our player, you can see that what's happening is it's basically keeping track of where the player is in that sense, right? When we start, we're at zero, zero. And then as we move, it's going to increase and decrease this variable, X variable. If we're moving horizontally, if we move vertically, it's going to increase and decrease the Y variable. So that's kind of what's going on right now. So I'm gonna just get rid of all this stuff. Um, I'll keep this here though, just in case I want to draw some other font things. <clears throat> all right, so that's what's going on right now. Now that's not technically correct, okay? Because all it is doing, if we actually check out this X variable, it's being plugged into this level.render method. And what it's actually doing is it's offsetting the, the level based on the scroll. That is technically correct, right? But it's it's not really like it's working as you guys can see, but it's, we're going to run into tons of problems, including the fact that, you know, when we have multiple players on the screen, on the screen where we've got multiple mobs to keep track of, this is a very bad way of doing it. So what I'm going to do right now is just delete that. That's gone. And we'll also delete these X and Y variables. Now this stuff goes away and this stuff sort of uh, ends up throwing an arrow. That's all right. Um, we'll deal with that in a minute. First of all, we need to actually create the player. So I'm gonna go private player, player. And what we've done here is we've created a player object, right? We've officially created a player object in the game class. Let's import the player. Um, one thing we need to do is instantiate it. Obviously currently it's equal, it, it's equal to null, that won't work. 
Um, I'm sure you guys are pretty comfortable with object oriented programming. We'll create it just before we create the level. Actually, we'll probably create it after we create the level. So player equals new player. And the only parameters that we, we don't actually have, like we've got the spawn parameter here, which we won't deal with now, but what we don't have in the player class is the actual, um, an input sort of parameter, right? Sorry, I'm just adjusting my microphone. So if you can hear that, I am sorry. Um, <clears throat> we're not actually inputting the input, right? What we need to do over here is we need to give the player a control method. So I'm gonna try, I'm gonna type input handler input, right? And I actually didn't call it in input handler, I called it keyboard. So we'll call it keyboard input, right? And and this input, the, and the keyboard is basically going to be an input method right here. Now we'll also use the mouse in the future, but for now it's just keyboard. Um, so let's import the keyboard. And now we need to also create a private variable. It's called keyboard, again, we'll call it input. And we'll just say that when the class does get created, let's make input equal to key, uh, this dot input equals input, right? And what's that, what that's gonna do is set this parameter equal to this. Um, <clears throat> and, or rather set that equal to the parameter. And we'll also do the same thing for over here, right? So we'll also put the keyboard input into here as well. So we've got, um, so that um, no matter how the player is created, it's always going to have an input method. So, and this input will actually be used over here to adjust the X and Y variables, which we'll deal with in a minute. But over here, we just need to type in, I think it's called K. And now you'll find that we've, we've, created, a, we've created a new player and we've got the K parameter in there so that, so that we get the, um, the keyboard, basically so that we can use the keyboard in this player class. Um, so now that we've done that, let's actually change the inputs of the player. So in other words, when we press the up arrow, when we press the down arrow, left, right, whatever, when we move our player, when we press the keys that we want to move our player, let's actually move our player. If we go all the way down to entity, right? So in other words, if we go to extends mob here and then we click on entity, control click on entity, um, we'll, get, we'll get into entity class, right? And we have two variables here, X and Y. And the X and Y variables are the variables that actually keep track of where our mob or entity, any entity actually, of where our entity is located on the map. So um, you can probably tell that if we want to, you know, if, if basically, if input dot, you know, up is pressed, if input dot up is pressed, right? We sort of wanna, we wanna subtract from Y, right? To make it, to make it sort of go up. Um, if input um, dot down, right? We wanna add to Y and exact same thing for X. So left and right, we wanna do exactly the same thing except for X. So what we're doing here is if we, if we, if we hold the left button, the left uh, arrow key or, or the A button, we're going to subtract, subtract uh, from X. So we've basically rewritten all that we did in this update method, but we've done, we've done it in the player method. And then what's, what it's actually doing is instead of affecting the int X and int Y variables that we just created in game, it's actually going to affect, if we control click on this, it's actually going to affect the entities X and Y um, coordinates. It's, it's actual location. So that in, in other words, in multiplayer, we'll be able to keep track of all those locations and, uh, and it'll work out great. Um, so yeah, that's what we've done right now. We've added all these things into the update method. Now, few things that we actually need to do, first of all, is run this update method. Because if this method isn't being ran, then it's not gonna be able to, nothing's gonna happen. As we press the keys, it's not gonna do anything. So we actually need to go player.update. Right now, few things like straight away. You can see that the mob has an update method, and the entity has an uh, entity has an update method. The reason for now, we're not going to deal with that. All right, player. I like to sort of update the player by itself, just in case anything else goes wrong. The player is still able to update itself. So for now, we are going to do that that way. But otherwise, you know, we don't even have like an entity system in our level class yet. So for now, player.update is gonna work. We might fix that in the future, depending on if I feel like it or not. Um, and the last thing that we'll do is probably arguably one of the most important to make this work again is this X and Y. We're gonna change it to player.x and player.y. All right, just like that. And 
if we launch our game, you'll find that, look at that, our game's working perfectly. But what it's actually doing here is instead of accessing um, this microphone, I have to get a new microphone stand. This is ridiculous. Hang on. Oh, I'm tightening it. All right, that's better. No, it's still falling. I'm going to order a new microphone stand. This is getting really annoying. Maybe like one of those desk clip one. Anyway, um, so g dot draw string. Um, again, you know, this is like the X now. Plus X. Oh, sorry, not plus X. Plus player dot X now, right? Um, plus Y plus player dot Y. And then we'll draw it, draw it at like 350. 300 because 450, 400 is not the middle. Um, and if we draw this right now, then you'll see that what we've got is um, it's updating like it was before, but now player is actually handling its own movement. Player and mob and entity, whatever, is handling its own movement. Now, this is one way to do it. And tomorrow we're going to cover the other way to do it. All right. I sort of want to take this, th take this one step at a time. Um, so you guys understand it, but that that is one way to do it and tomorrow we're going to take a look at another way to do it So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of game programming it was quite a long one and uh, Yeah, hit the like button if you did and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye